Hi, and welcome to GETV. In this episode, we're going to talk to the renowned gamification expert, consultant and designer, Carl Cobb. Now, Carl, I'm sure, as you know, is a professor and a director at Bloomsburg University, the Institute for Interactive Technologies. He's also the author of a number of must-read books, including The Gamification of Learning and Instruction, and Gadgets, Games, and Gizmos for Learning. Just like us here at Growth Engineering, Carl has a burning passion for creating engaging and effective learning experiences for individuals and organizations. So, Carl, thank you so much for joining us at GETV. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Julia, for having me. I'm really excited to be here and uh, really excited to be talking about games and gamification. Fantastic. So, look, let's jump right in. So, we'll start with an easy question. Um, how would you respond to those who claim that video games or games in general are a waste of time and a frivolous activity? Right. So, the first question I would ask is, um, don't you think lectures are a waste of time and a frivolous activity? Uh, lots of times uh, people think that the ideal learning situation is a classroom lecture, but the research doesn't support that. In fact, the research is pretty clear that game-based learning can be a really effective way of motivating individuals, helping them retain knowledge, and actually helping them to become more engaged. And there's lots of studies that show activity is what drives learning. So I always think it's really funny that they hold out a classroom lecture as the gold standard of instruction, yet it's not as gold standard as, as you think. In fact, there's some research that shows people in lecture situations actually pay attention to the information at a problem solving or a creative level less than 1% of the time. So if we really want creativity and problem solving and we want higher level thinking, we really need to move away from a lecture and move more toward games and game-based learning. Wow, and we and we certainly feel that, that we've really seen the value of gamification and, and game-based learning here, you know, what we do in growth engineering. Um, the more we seem to put in of gamification and, and game-based learning into our clients, the, the bigger the sort of learner engagement and excitement in and around the learning becomes. So yeah, we've certainly seen that. Um, Second question, so what, why do you think uh, it is that learners, generally speaking, find games much more appealing than other traditional learning approaches? Right, I, I think the main reason is uh, kind of what you said. I think um, when we first put, we as an industry, first put content online, we took the worst part of the classroom instruction and we automated it. So we have the boring PowerPoints, we have the slides, we have monotone voices, we have no activity, we have no ability to read facial expressions. I would say we, we took the humanity out of learning. And what games and gamification does is puts the humanity back in learning. So I think a big part of it is a rebellion against really boring, ineffective learning. Almost every when I talk to who watches traditional instruction has checked their email, has looked at their phone, because there's no level of engagement. It's somebody disembodied voice talking to you. So what really needs to happen is there needs to be some action or activity. People like activity. And so that's what gamification and games do. They add that activity, they add the humanity back in, they add some excitement back in, they add challenge. Humans like challenges. What we've done with a lot of instruction is taken the challenge out. So games and gamification put the challenge back in. So I think all of those elements contribute to people really moving toward it. The other is that people now in corporations grew up playing video games. They are engaged with video games. They're engaged with, you know, they have literally the whole world at their fingertip with a cell phone and they can see anything they want and have any kind of interactivity they want, yet <laughs> we give them non-interactive instruction. And, and so we can't compete with the cell phone. So we need to do that. And the good thing about making it interesting and engaging is that leads to learning. It's not something people say, oh, it's sugarcoating learning. No, it's actually how learning occurs. If you look back at how kids learn, they play. And that's not different than how adults learn. You know, kids will go to school all day and they'll come home and they'll play school. Well, they were just there all day, why? Because they're reinforcing the rules and the concepts of how school works. 
And so adults, we need to do that as well. We need to have that play because play frees our mind a little bit. It allows for us to get into state of flow. And it also allows us to be more open to receiving content and information. So there's a lot of value through games and, and gamification. So within the world of serious, serious games and learning games, obviously there are situations where you've got some content which is not that fun. So whatever, it might be compliance content, it might be a content of a very serious nature. How can you deploy gamification and game-based learning when the, the content itself isn't fun? Right, that's a, that's a good question. So uh, let me uh, answer in a couple ways. So very interestingly, if we look at life and death situations, we look at military, we look at healthcare, those are the areas that have implemented serious games first. The military has been doing war games forever. Um, if you look at the situation in terms of uh, medical, you know, we have save the patient and, you know, we can't let the patient die. So there's critical things. We use game based or simulation to, to do that. So if we look at content, what we want to do is find out what does the learner, the employee need to do and whatever they're doing in their job has. Maybe it's really boring or maybe it's not that interesting, but it does have some consequences somewhere that are going to be interesting or life threatening or um, monetarily threatening or something like that. So I think we need to find out where those key intrinsic drivers are and move the instruction in that direction. If we also look at some elements of games, so so people, uh, maybe the content's boring, but people actually get excited when they master something, when they learn something, when they see they're making progress, when they see that they are um, leveling up, if you will. So some of those elements that people say, oh, you know, who cares about, you know, whether or not you get, um, a badge or something. Well, a badge is a tangible evidence that you've learned something. And if it's tied well, people like to know that they've learned things. People spend hours by themselves learning certain esoteric things. You know, we all have a friend that knows every historical fact ever. He's or she's not getting paid for it. They just know it, right? And they love to show that off because they love to show off their knowledge. So can you create environments where people can show off their knowledge, can show off their progress? Also, people like to share. We all have friends that, you know, that history person that shares everything because they want that social validation. So if we can put them in a situation where they can share their knowledge and show that they've gained that knowledge, even if it's um, what we call um, boring knowledge, it can be really exciting. I mean, if you think about trivia, how many people go to trivia nights at pubs and bars? Trivia is kind of boring. Like who cares about, you know, the founder of whatever? But we care because we want to see how we do. So can't we take knowledge like that, but from a corporate where we do care a little bit about whether or not we're in compliance and whether or not we fill out the expense report correctly and, and that other information that's not really ex that exciting and put it into an exciting way of learning it and reflecting upon that learning. And I think that's a good way to look at it. Interesting. So in, in terms of the higher levels of, of Bloom's taxonomy, so, you know, in terms of really getting the, the knowledge to turn into behavior, what kind of game based techniques have you seen that work really well to try and really embed solid change and transform cultures to be more, you know, information security, you know, cognizant or to be more health and safety aware or to be more, more, more financially, you know, prudent or whatever it might be. Right. So I think there's a couple things. One is um, if you take a step back, um, we have to have that level of comprehension and declarative knowledge kind of at the basic level. So you have to have that. Gamification is a good way to do that. If we go up, what gamification does better than I think a lot of traditional instruction is show the consequences of not doing the behavior. And so what gamification can do really well is give you consequence. And the other thing it does is it adds emotion back in. So um, not only it's not like dry, like, OK, don't do this or you're going to get in trouble. Don't do this or your password will get hacked or whatever. It's OK, your password's just been hacked. Why do you think that is, right? Or you've got to figure out this problem and you've got to do it fast or you're about to be audited tomorrow. What's wrong with this expense report, right? So that puts you immediately into an emotional state if, you, if it's done right, and, but a controlled emotional state. So you're not overly panicked, 
but you know that there's something at stake in gamification. Maybe it's starting over, maybe it's not getting as many points, maybe it's a losing a lot, whatever it happens to be. And that element of something at stake makes it more interesting and drives behavior change. So a lot of times if we, you know, if we, I always say to people, think of your most effective learning moment ever. And it's probably due to some kind of emotion, right? You couldn't get something, you're frustrated, you couldn't get it. And all of a sudden the light bulb goes off and you're like, I got it. That you're going to remember that a lot longer than, you know, here's the conf here's the information, here's the information, you got it, good, that's okay, you know, cream for a test, et cetera. So gamification adds that element of emotion that ties us into changing our behavior. And the other good thing about uh, gamification in particular is it does it over time, right? So, you know, this week you get some information, next week you get some information, et cetera. Studies show that um, reinforcement over time is, is really the only way to change behavior. Uh, I read a really interesting study about people that had a heart attack, 25% of them, this is men, um, didn't change their behavior at all after the heart attack. And other people, right, right, went back to doing the same thing after a period of time. Well, because there's no reminder, there's no um, sticking to it. And what gamification can do if it's designed really well is it can give you reminders in the forms of questions, behavior, et cetera. That's going to shape behavior. And in organizations, that's what we want. We want to shape behavior to the outcomes that we want. So games give that emotional element. Gamification then can continue on that shaping and get to the behavior to where we need it to be. Fantastic. Um, you recently mapped out three core elements which you say um, help drive learning with, with gamification. Can you briefly talk us through them? Sure. So the first is visual measurement and of your progress. So people uh, in a lot of learning situations don't know if they've gotten the information until way later right at the end when we give them a quiz or you know weeks later when they try to apply it so uh gamification is really helpful if it gives you information that provides you notice of your progress people like to know that they've learned they'd like to know that they've accomplished something so the first is visual um, notification of your progress the second is um socialization of learning so learning is a really social activity games are really social activities but if you're taking an online module all by yourself at your desk, there's no socialization. So gamification can add that social, hey, how'd you do on this question? How'd you do on that? And in fact, socialization actually means the content has legs beyond the learning event. So we go to the water cooler, so to speak, and say, hey, you know, that was a really tough question. Did you get it? Didn't you get it? That kind of stuff. So if we can add social elements to gamification, that's really effective and can be really helpful. Um, uh, the third I call like small victories, right? So, um, you, we might go to, uh, uh, work and it might be a sludge all day and we don't know that if we're doing well or making progress or having any kind of impact. If a gamification is cor done correctly, we can get small answers. So I, I give the example of you played trivial, the game Trivial Pursuit, right? So you could win Trivial Pursuit by knowing all the trivia, but there's lots of small victories by knowing the answer to a trivia question. So that ability to show mastery and to have the excitement of, of knowing something, of learning something, if you, if you, it's so interesting. Again, you go back to kids and the first few years, they're so excited to go to school. They can't wait to come home and tell you what they've learned. And then a couple of years of our school system, and then they say, how was school day? Oh, was boring. What'd you do? Oh, nothing, right? Because we have to make them sit still. We don't let them socialize. You know, be quiet. Don't talk to your neighbor. We don't give them any progress. You only get tests at uh, mid-quarter and finals. So you have no, no sense of whether or not you're learning. But if you go back to that early time, it's those small senses of victory that are really exciting. And in learning and development, especially in a corporate space, we want to give people those small victories, especially because learning and development no longer is that formal process. People are learning informally, and sometimes a learning management system is the best way to get to those people. So um, that can be really helpful. And so those are the three elements, really showing visible progress of, of where you are, allowing people to have those small victories so that they know what the small victories are, and also the socialization of learning so people can um, 
brag about their learning or ask questions about their learning, gain understanding. So those three things I think are the most important. The other thing that we've read recently that um, that you did, which we really loved, um, is about personalization. Personalization of, of, of growth engineering is a big part of what we do when we're you know talking to companies. And we really loved your your latest chapter in your book um, of using games and gamification to create personalized instruction. Could you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. So the interesting thing about gamification is it. So um, to go back to say, you know, taking the worst of classroom instruction, we use broadcast instruction, right? So we broadcast the same message to everybody. What gamification though allows us to do, uh, if it's well designed, is I can answer some questions and maybe I get them right, but you get them wrong or probably more likely vice versa. I get them wrong, you get them right. And so what happens is now the instruction that I'm getting is personalized to me. Oh, Carl, here's your feedback for this. Here's your feedback for that. Gamification also allows us to go at our own pace. So in a classroom, everybody, or online learning module, most people have to, you know, we have to wait for the audio, so we go at our own pace. Gamification, asking us questions, allowing us to decide how many to answer, what to answer, personalizes it to us, not just at, to us as our learning personality, but to us at the time. So let's say I have a lots of time today, then I can do more of the learning through gamification. But tomorrow I'm really busy, I have back-to-back -back meetings, I can only do maybe five minutes. And so it really personalizes not just to my understanding of the content going at my own pace, the feedback it gives me because what I get wrong might be different from what somebody else gets wrong, but even the day-to-day -day personalization of allowing me to decide how much learning I want today. So it really gives me a lots of flexibility that traditional online and learning doesn't provide. And by that um, feedback, it lets me know how I'm doing right away. So it's as if somebody's standing over my shoulder saying, hey, Carl, you got that one right, good job, try again, at the next level. And so it gives me that sense of personalization, but it also gives me the ability to go um, and do what I want. And some of them even, uh, good good platforms let me go where I want. Hey, I kind of already know this. Let me try something that I don't know, or let me try it at a really hard level. Oh, I didn't do it? Okay, so let me come back a level and try that. So there's lots of different ways that gamification really adds to personalization. So exciting. It's it's always such a thrill to talk to you, Carl. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. There's just so, so many different ideas. And, you know, I know that if, if I was working in an organization you were running, I would just I want to learn. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's fantastic. Um, so just finally, where can people find out a little bit more about you and what you do? Um, because, you know, I think everyone should know more about you. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So uh, my website is uh, carlcop.com. Um, I've got several, if you do lynda.com, I've got a course on lynda.com. I'm coming out with a, that's a gamification course. I'm coming out with a, another course in the near future about kind of learning interactively. So I think that's an exciting uh, venture. I've got several books. Uh, you had mentioned before the gamification learning instruction, gamification learning instruction field book, uh, gadgets, games, and gizmos, one of my most fun books to write. So uh, that was kind of cool. Um, so those kind of places, uh, I blog pretty frequently. They can follow me on Twitter um, at KKAPP. Um, I'm always doing links and, you know, fun kind of stuff on Twitter as well. So, uh, and let me tell you, Juliet, I really enjoy what you guys are doing. Um, I think with the learning superheroes and Genie and all that kind of cool stuff, uh, really moving gamification ahead in organizations and corporations, which, um, you know, I talk about it sometimes theoretically. Uh, it's nice to see it put into practice and the really exciting results that you get. So thanks for having me. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And I hope we can do this again soon. Thanks, Carl. Absolutely.